literary triangle. Can anyone tell me why Fitzgerald's name is on the bottom? Because Fitzgerald's liberated work of the 20s, beginning with this side of paradise, formed the base for the extended realism of both Hemingway and Faulkner. Or to summarize this chapter with special emphasis on the protagonist's time continuum thought processes relating to his father's death and his own impending death in Spain. Class is dismissed. a drink. <laughs> yes, I guess I could. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. you have no proof that I drugged you. I'll deny it and offer these photos as proof. Tell them you seduced me, but you've got a thing for students. The realism of Faulkner, Steinbeck, Hemingway, and even Hammett opened the doors to a new kind of literary expression indigenous to the new American frontier experience, which completely transformed the period and formed a direct bridge linking us all the way from... Whose idea did you think this whole thing was? What are you talking about? What I am talking about, Chad, is that you are a singularly unimaginative young man. Do you remember the day you watched me walk off the steps? Since that moment, your mind has not been your own. Don't feel bad. I always get bored after a while. Although, there was one boy in Denver who did keep me amused for almost nine weeks. But then he was wonderfully creative. First you'll experience dizziness, then mild paralysis, and then total cardiac arrest. You've drugged me! No, dear. I've killed you. Pornography, Satanism, voodoo, witchcraft. These books aren't just relics, Mr. Anmar. She uses them to capture the souls of others. By her own admission, Satan guides her. You don't really expect me to believe this, do you? But you must believe me. Hello? Dr. Ramsey, it's Millie. It's about Therese. She's much worse. She's jealous of our relationship. She twists it into something lewd and something sordid. Look, Millie, I have a hospital call to make in your area tomorrow. I'll drop by and we'll talk about this. Thank you, Doctor. Hi, Doc. 
So, I guess it's just a wasted visit, Doctor. Because I know Millicent won't talk about me when I'm in the house. And here, I am. This hatred has got to stop. You'll destroy yourself. Oh, I don't think so, Doc. Besides, it's really all Millicent has. Her hatred of me is the only passion in her lonely, pathetic little existence. If you just loosen up a little. Oh, did that bother you? What's the matter, Doc? You still a virgin? Is it that you just don't like girls? I'll call again soon. We don't need you anymore, Ramsey. Why don't you just get the hell out of our lives? Don't phone us and don't call on us. We'll leave! And don't ever come back here! Dr. Ramsey's gone, Millicent. He won't be back. What do you think of that, dear little sister? But I wouldn't answer her, nor would I allow her to enter. Hello? Hello, Dr. Ramsey. It's Millie. Millie, I'm terribly worried. We must talk. I found a way to deal with Therese. I insist that we talk. That is all I have to say to you, Dr. Ramsey. Your advice is no longer required. Therese Millicent Larimore. The most advanced case of dual personality I have ever seen. You should see what I'm getting for his birthday. It's a, a genuine Zuni fetish doll. I found it in a curio shop on 3rd Avenue. There's a golden chain wrapped around it to keep the spirit from making the doll come to life. Mom. Oh! <laughs> 
good. I'll be waiting for you.